The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional sponsor, an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center rated top sports bar for the second year in a row. That Sports Center enjoyed their famous 75 cent wing night along with delicious Molson products on tap, along with a great atmosphere and other great food options available as well. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. Booyah, and it's time for the Game Sports Show. It's yours truly, David McKaig. It is July the 25th, 2018. It is Wednesday. We're live at Sports Center Bar and Grill. I'm alongside Matt Primo, Jamie Antonello, and we have a special guest from Sabercats Football today, Jacob Fecto. We're going to bring in the fellows in just a few moments. Just going to get through the usual introduction portion of the Game Sports Show. As I mentioned, we're here live at Sports Center Bar and Grill for the Wednesday night wing night, the famous. Wing night here at Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar for the second year in a row, rated. It is from four until midnight. You gotta make sure you come on down to Sports Center for their seventy-five cent wings. Enjoy some great food, some great cold beverages, some great service, and a great atmosphere as well as Sports Center. As you can most likely tell in the background, is a lively atmosphere here, as it is every wing night. List of additional sponsors of the game sports show. There's Boston Pizza. Sault Ste. Marie, where we do our Thursday and Sunday editions of the game sports show. Also, Silver Creek Golf Course, where we do our Thursdays and Sunday editions as well, which rotate with Boston Pizza. The Wicked Sister in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Pingator Cleaners in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And rounding out Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. North Shore Sports and Auto. The Salon. Superior Pro Shop. Northern Critters in Need. Big Brother, Big Sister. Kem Belanger Hockey. Northern Signs as well, being a part of the show. And now... Fellas, I must state, it's things that we announced last week on the Game Sports Show. A big new sponsor to the show that's going to be spearheading a lot of initiatives with the Game Sports Show and another home coming in the month of August and obviously every Thursday in September, Northern Superior Brewery, as we announced last week on the Boston Pizza edition of the Game Sports Show. Very excited that Northern Superior Brewery has joined the show. We look forward to having their partnership on board with us, or should I say, we're on board with them. That's probably the best thing for, for me to say as Snorin Superior Brewery has going to bring on some Thunderbird segments. We're going to have some Sioux Greyhound segments along with a professional hockey tie-in that we have on our Thursday edition of the Game Sports Show. You're listening to the Game Sports Show on thegamesportshow.podbean.com or on www.thegamesportshow.com. Uh, you may as well be listening into your, on your couch right now. Maybe listening to it on the radio, on your phone. Either way, we're proud to say that we are part of your day. And without further ado, tonight I'm going to introduce everyone who's here, and then I'm going to say what the agenda is of the show tonight before we dive in to a very action-packed show. I'm going to go with the man who's in front of me right now, who was actually late today, which is why I'm going to him first, and I'm going to throw him right under the bus because I'm never late. No, never. Uh, James, I'm never late. I'm never late. Uh, so, anyways, the one, the only, Matt Primo. Uh, excited to be back, uh, especially as the Sabercats prep for their playoffs coming up this weekend. Um, and I think we have lots to talk about this week, so I'm excited for the, the show. Lots to talk about for sure. We're using our old-fashioned way of recording currently just to, as we work our tweaks out with our new microphone here. Uh, you know, I'm not the techie guy as our, well, board operator tonight, Scott Nason and producer Ghost are in terms of the production side of things, but you know what? We're learning, and you know what? This way worked before, so it's always going to work now. I'm going to go with the man to my right, another coach of the Sabercats, and the man who's been around me for years with this show. He's not annoyed with me yet. Same introduction I give Justin basically every time. Jamie Antonello. What's up, pal? Hey, buddy. Uh, annoyed is a strong word, I think, but <laughs> no, I mean, good to be back for another Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it's, it's bumping in here tonight. Lots of baseball coming through, but yeah, we should have a good show. Happy to have Jake on the show, and uh, we'll get into some Sabercat talk before playoffs. Definitely going to have this first segment, get into the introduction or the agenda portion, sorry, of the show with our introduction here. We're going to talk to Sabercats football and getting prepared for the playoffs. We might even jump into a little bit of Steelers if we have that time to do a little update on their end, if possible. If not, uh, we're going to be jumping right into the CFL reaction. When it comes to Johnny Manziel, little teaser getting traded. And then we're going to have a break. And we have the second part of the show is going to be very funny, I like to say. The one and only Nathan Inch is finally coming on air with his wrestling character. Very excited to have him on there. And then we're going to have a break after that, which will be followed by 
Anthony Greco making his debut, a basketball expert in town who, let's say, has uh, been very hard to get on the show very well, and he has had a lot of harsh words to say about the Toronto Raptors trade, which will invade that part three. We'll take a break, and when we come back from that part three portion, it's going to dive right into my topic, which will be the Toronto Raptors trade, <coughs> along with some more roundtable discussions that we do here on the Wednesday edition. And hopefully I don't lose my voice too much during the show. I do a lot of talking for a living. As you know, so hopefully I don't lose my voice too much. But you know what? We'll get started here. I'm going to let Jamie and Matt spearhead our yearly and daily, weekly, whatever the right term would be. Let's go with weekly. Our weekly edition of In the Pocket, as it's always in season now. It's not just the NFL season. There's no off season now within the pocket, which is awesome because it's one of our favorite segments on the show. Preems, I'm going to let you dive right into introducing Jake. Getting him into uh, getting him into the show, introducing him. Then we're talking some Saber Cats football. Yeah, so we're super excited to have Jake on the show tonight. He's uh, been the Saber Cat organization for four years now. And he's got one year of football underneath his belt at the University of Windsor. Um, he's the captain of our team. He's uh, he's definitely the, the vocal leader of our squad this year. Um, the guy, he's since we first got him four years ago to the player he's now. He's improved uh, immensely. He's a super coachable kid. Um, we're excited he came back for his last year. Most guys that are playing university don't do that, but uh, he's a big part of this program, wants to see the program be successful, and he wanted to see uh, a championship come back to Sault Ste. Marie. So we're super excited to have him on, um, especially this week as we prep for the playoffs. Uh, we're going to be facing Brampton, or uh, Brantford, sorry, this week um, in the uh, divisional semifinals. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited. We had a good practice yesterday, looking for another good practice tomorrow. Um, a little bit unfortunate last week that we uh, – Halton didn't show up for the final game of the season, so we had a forfeit win. Um, one positive, we got to rest some, some bodies and get some guys healthy going into the playoffs, so that's a, a, a positive. But we missed out on that, that game to kind of stay sharp and improve on some things. So um, super excited to have Jake on the show, super excited to talk uh, some football with him as well, and maybe he'll stick around for some basketball even. Be interesting to see him around for the show if possible. Jamie, I'm going to allow you to introduce Jake, and then we'll dive right into the Sabercast football. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, I think. Uh, Matt did a pretty good job there, but I'm going to pass over to Jake here. Just go through your football experience in general, how long you've been playing, and uh, your experience with Sabercats and your experience especially at Windsor. Yeah, well, hi, my name is uh, Jacob, and uh, I've been a player for the Sabercats organization for four years now. I've done one year at uh, the University of Windsor playing as a linebacker, and for the Sabercats it's been an awesome time. Uh, They've developed me a ton from where I was back in grade 10 to the player I am now. And my experience at Windsor was uh, something I couldn't even imagine. Um, coming back to play Sabercats, it made me that much of a better player as well as that much of a better leader. And I've really enjoyed my years with the Sabercats organization. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, Coach Primo and I can only attest to Jake's character, right? He's our team captain. He's our vocal guy. Uh, but just talk a little bit more about Windsor, right? The... We tell our guys that play cats, if you play saber cats, when you go back to high school, the game slows down, right? You feel faster. Like, what was the difference for you from co coming from Windsor, CIS guys, flying around the field, um, coming back to saber cats this year? How do you feel it felt? Um, it definitely felt a lot slower as well as a lot sloppier. Um, you went from having everyone being just as much of an athlete as you to also being very football IQ smart where you come back to playing Sabercats and a lot of people are really athletic but they don't know how to play the game as well as others. So that was the biggest change was, um, uh, that was the biggest change, uh, playing people who weren't just, who were just athletes and now, they weren't actually knowing where to be and when to be on the field. Uh, and that's the main difference I found with um, the speed of the game and the pace. Yeah, I know for sure. And uh, I mean, Jake's, well, I'll say it was a, a pleasure. I mean, he, he unfortunately had to play for me uh, his first year at JV, and uh, we've talked about that before. And was not we're, it's it's in the past, right? But now in your last summer that you can, yeah, in your last summer that you can play SaberCats, right? Um, we believe as a coaching staff. I think I think you boys as players believe, right? We got a good squad this year. We have a legit shot at this. Um, but like, what's it going to take in your eyes for us to? Ideally, we got five practices and three games left, right? And we always want to come out. We get three wins, we're champs. So what do you think it's going to take for us to get there? Um, for us to make it all the way, I really think that it's going to depend on how we practice for the next five practices. Um, 
I feel like a good two to eight, two practices a week. If they're good practices, it leads to a good game as well. I found that's always something that's the Sabercats organization has struggled with, with having bad week of practice, uh, leading to a bad game. So I think as long as we practice hard and we uh, make sure we're all healthy all season for the rest of the season, we should do perfectly fine. So you got two fine coaches right here. I'm not just sucking up to them because they're on the show with myself and a part of the Game Sports Show family. But you know, when you started the season, I'm sure these two fine individuals had some words for you to, to what they expected from you this season. You know, the, did they? Can you share that conversation with? The, well, these coaches let you share that conversation, firstly. But uh, what were the words that they shared with you that they expected uh, from you this year? And what do you, did you expect from yourself this year to be prepared for for next year? Um. This year, I've really uh, when I first talked to the coaches, they really expected me in my eyes to be a leader on, on and off the field this year, and I think that was the main thing uh, to make sure I got all the grade 11s and the newcomers to the team, make sure they all felt welcome and uh, felt comfortable playing with everyone else. And for myself, I really put myself uh, as being trying to be the best player I could be, as well as build some confidence going into university again next year. And that's something I think that uh, I've done really well and. I think I've been a really good leader as well as um, uh, performed to the level I was hoping to, so that's that. Yeah, really, we couldn't have asked for uh, much more from Jake this summer. He's done a great job. He's been the leader. Um, I think he leads our defense in tackles. Um, he's proven why he's um, playing at the university level for sure. Um, j- just uh, what, one of, what I'd like to add is that uh, Jake was able to dress this year as a rookie, um, as a freshman in university, which is really hard to do. Um, I, I just have a, my question for him is um, h- how did you feel you fit in when you when you got to Windsor, being a, a freshman and, and dressing, and uh, what are your what are your goals for next season going back? Um, how I thought fit, thought I fit in was uh, I definitely felt at the start of the year almost all my skill was a lot n- not to the same level as other players. But uh, as Coach said earlier, I feel like I'm a very coachable kid. And within the first week, I was one of the linebacker, rookie linebackers. I think the only, they're one of the two rookie linebackers who's dressed. And I was by the end of the year, I dressed six out of the eight games um, and went from fourth string to second string. So I felt like I, went, uh, I was able to learn the defense a lot better as well as uh, mastering and key on my reads. And that was a big thing that helped me. No, and that's huge. And I'll point out, right, Jake took a little bit of an unconventional path. A lot of the guys that go and are able to dress in their first year do a fifth year of high school. Right, you did not. And uh, I know as part of it was uh, you had an injury your grade 12 year, right, knocked you out for the whole season. Worry of that, not being able to go away. Um, but uh, to that point, again, we're, we couldn't be happier, right? You're one of the reasons why we're competing for a championship this summer. And I think you realize that, right? You really give a little bit of stability. But... Talk about uh, some of the guys on defense this summer, right? Um, some of your teammates, your coaches, right? Some guys that have really stepped up, guys impressed you, returning guys. Uh, just uh, give your boys some love here, man. Well, I really think that uh, we knew from the start that we had a good core group of guys returning to play on our defense. Um, players such as Joe Trudeau, Jared Lesage, Joe Rosso, and everyone else. Uh, and all those people have been performing to the best of their ability, and I think they've done an amazing job all year. Uh, Joe Ross has been an awesome leader on the field. He's probably one of our smartest, if not the smartest player on our defense. And uh, he's taken a great job leading the defense. Jared's done a great job making sure there's momentum in and out throughout the games. Um, I'm really proud of the rookies and the newcomers we have, too. We have Jackson, who came out uh, week two. He's, week two is the first day. Week he got to start, and first week he got a pick. Balled out. Um, other rookies like Jacob Jurich, he's a great 11, stepped up and has been a leader on our defense. Um, a hard-nosed football player. He's led our team and uh, he's led our team all year, uh, in and out of the games. And uh, I'm really proud of the defense we have. Our front seven, our D line, Devin Segan, um, a baller. Simple as that. He uh, has had a great season all year. No one can block him. I swear. Um, and uh, yeah, our defense has been playing amazing this year. So I'm proud of our boys. Kind of butted in front of you there, Priest. My bad. <laughs> you know, playing university football, like you said at the top, was that it's different than what it is playing uh, summer here with the Sabercats. You know, and obviously some individuals on your team, you know, I'm sure 
depend a lot on you, obviously, but I'm sure they would even like to shed, get some knowledge from you and absorb the knowledge and the experience that you bring from a university to uh, the football here with the Sabercats. What can you, sh- what do you, or what do you, uh, which is what I should say, share with them if, uh, in terms of your experiences, and what can you share with the listeners with your experiences at university and how you're able to take what you've learned here and able to maintain that level even going back to university because, like you said, it's different coming home than going to play a different level afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Um, the one thing I always tell, try to tell people is I feel like everyone wants to slack off at practice or not be super intense, but at the next level, you compete every second of practice, and that's the one of the bigger, biggest differences. And one of the things I really wanted to bring this year as well was like some actual competition, some getting angry with your teammates, pushing around, shoving it with the team. Um, it's all good competition, and that's the one thing I try to make sure people know is that it's okay to get angry, play some ball, and be competitive all year. So that's one thing for sure that I've noticed is different and something I try to make other people aware about uh, when they're going on to the next level. Yeah, and uh, I can attest to that. I mean, especially early in the year, right, myself as the offensive coordinator, I'd be yelling at Jake all the time just because he's causing problems and getting in scrums. I love it, though. I, I, our old line are finally starting to push back now and get fired up themselves, which I was hoping they'd be doing all year. But if you're going to peak at any point, playoffs is the time to do it. But uh, I think Coach has a question for you here now. Um, yeah, I want to get your opinion on the offensive side of the ball, playing on the defense, going against our offense every day in, uh, in practice. Um, who is uh, your most favorite player to tackle on our offense? Oh, there you go. Uh, my favorite player to tackle on our offense, 10 times out of 10, will be Greg Caruso. <laughs> Something about him. Uh, he's one of my best friends. Love him to the day I die. But when we and him are on the field, we don't like each other at all. I've uh, been uh, pretty upset that he's been injured the last few weeks of practice. I haven't really had time to hit him. So looking forward to having him back at practice and able to uh, make some noise with him now. Um, I believe that would be unanimous across our defense that everyone likes to tackle Greg the most. So <laughs> I'm not surprised by that response. Have you tackled him yet, Coach? I've been very close. <laughs> very close. <laughs> you know, with the playoffs coming around the corner, it's a different kind of season than it is the, the regular season, obviously. Playoffs, you have a whole new slate. Everyone is starting with clear stats. If you look individual-wise and team-wise, anything can happen. That's the beauty about sport. It doesn't matter if it's football, if it's hockey, if it's basketball, if it's tennis, golf, (laughs) going to random sports. But it doesn't matter what the sport is, is basically what I'm intending to say. So what can you provide to the team in terms of making sure everyone stays on their game? And what do you expect from your fellow teammates going to playoffs to maintain the consistency you had going into the playoffs? I know you had a forfeit this last week, which is unfortunate because you want to keep the ball rolling or have that uh, feeling of game time. But... How do you stay prepared in terms of the playoffs in comparison to the season? Well, I truly believe that um, it all starts with uh, practice and also knowing that I would really want our team not to think because we've beaten previous teams already in the year that we're going to walk over them again in the postseason because playoff football is a whole new game. Um, generally, it's everyone's playing a lot harder. Uh, and like he said, nothing matters uh, anymore, right? It's all a clean slate. So I expect us to um, not take days off if it means showing up 20 minutes early, an hour early, do whatever it takes to uh, get what we need in, all the install, everything else to uh, be successful. I think it's all worth it in the end if um, we come up victorious. So we have Brantford coming up, Jake, and uh, I know we've played them once already this year, um, and I think our front seven is going to be put to the test again. They have a very strong running game, a couple strong running backs. Um, what's going to be your focus uh, at linebacker, and what do you think our defense's focus is going to be um, in order to be successful against Brantford's uh, offensive attack? I think for our defense, we really need to make sure we stop the run game as soon as possible and force them to get the ball in the air. Um, I hope our defense stays physical all game. We have a very strong and physical defense, so I think as long as we come out ready to hit, ready to uh, be physical all game, then um, we should put their run game to stop uh, pretty early in the game. And uh, if we do that, it should lead to a lot easier on our defense as well as getting the uh, our offense to hands the ball in our offense's hands all game. Yeah, and that that game uh, for the fans out there is going to be this Saturday, uh, 7 p.m. start. We're under the lights. Um, big game, right? It's our first round of the playoffs. Uh, having home field advantage for us is huge, right? Teams hate traveling to us, and we love going on the road because we're so used to it. It doesn't bother us anymore. But uh, I personally think we have the best home field advantage in the league. 
Unfortunately, we are uh, one and two at home this year right now, technically, but um, we'll definitely be able to change that uh, this week. But um, I think uh, Dave has some a little bit more personal questions for you now, Jake. See, I had to sub in Jamie there for a second. So my hands are full of grease. I'm not going to lie. And with this old-fashioned usage of uh, sound recording that we're doing, uh, it would not work good in terms of having the grease. So when I've had the previous guests of the Sabercats on, I like to call it the rapid fire edition. I'm going to ask you personal questions about yourself so the listeners, fans, and everyone can get to know you a little bit more. Okay, and if you don't want to answer the question for every reason, you can just say skip, pass, uh, but trust me, it won't get to that point. I'm not going to ask you the uh, your favorite girl band or anything like that, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go sports-related questions. It's going to be more like a rapid fire, nothing, nothing scripted. Obviously, on the show, we do a lot of free, and that's what we're known for the best because we just know our stuff at the top of our head. Some of us. <laughs> Some of us. So, if you're ready, Jake, I'm going to jump into it right now. I'm going to start off and say your favorite NFL team. Uh, Seattle Seahawks. Favorite NFL player? Deshaun Jackson. Ooh, I like that, actually. I, I like that. Favorite role model that you look up to? Bobby Wagner, actually. Ooh. Yeah, 100%. That's nice. In the NFL this season, who's going to be the worst NFL team? Prediction. The Cleveland Browns. <laughs> See, you might not like this, Preems. I said the Giants. Uh, I'm no. so, <laughs> sorry. Just for you, I gave that a dig for you. Uh, the best NFL team this year and winner of the Super Bowl is basically what I'm asking out of that. Jacksonville. Ooh, I like that. I do like that. Now, best running back in the NFL? Uh, Lady on Bell. Actually, Todd Gurley. I, I think Todd Gurley. Contract. Yeah. You're a linebacker. Yeah. Favorite, favorite linebacker. Best and best linebacker. Two different questions. Um, favorite linebacker, Terrell Suggs. And best linebacker, Bobby Wagner. T-Sizzle. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like that. Now, I'm going to go into more of the personal side of things because it's just like I said, rapid question. Favorite genre of music? Uh, rap. Hip-hop. Favorite artist? Oh, um, Mac Miller, probably. Nice. I like that. That's pretty good. Favorite food? Uh, chicken wings. <laughs> chicken wings. There you go. I like that. Sports Center chicken wings. Yeah. I'm going to add at yeah. that. <laughs> Absolutely. Favorite pregame meal or main pregame meal? I don't eat before games. Wow. Mine was Sloppy Joe's. The worst pregame I know. I know. <laughs> that, that explains a lot. <laughs> it, does. it does. It does. Now, last one. If I was to pull out your iPod or your – well, no one has iPods anymore. Every time I say that, I get a slap on the wrist, actually. So if I pull out your phone and go to your iTunes or your Spotify or Google Play or anything, what is the last song I'm going to see that you played and that you listened to? Don't be shy here. You can say, if it's, if it's the Spice Girls, want to be my lover. We won't judge you. It's Matt's favorite song. Uh, most likely bands by Shoreline Mafia. Nice. And that's the Rapid Fire Edition. Not bad, eh? Not bad. Just basic random questions. Now I open the floor for because I asked, do you guys have any personal questions you want to ask Jake that you want to get to know him about? Well, a little disappointed I wasn't his role model, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we, 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 <laughs> I mean, me and Jake, me, me, me and Jake went to the same high school. Uh, we're both White Pines alum. Started through some tough days in high school sports, but uh, so we share the share the same uh, green and white uh, pride. But uh, no, in terms of uh, questions I have for you, um, what, what are your goals for post football and uh, beyond university? Um, my goal for post football as of now is to become an accountant, uh, and if not that, I'd like to go and become a math teacher. So those are my two for uh, post football and post university. And do you see uh, any coaching days in your future? Yeah, I'd love to coach. If I, especially if I became a teacher, I think it'd be amazing to coach uh, high school football as well. So I, I look forward to hopefully being able to teach others what I learned as a kid. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go a little role reversal here on you. Um, what is the worst, that, like, what do you hate defending on an offense? Just as a defensive guy, as a linebacker specifically, what do you hate? I'm, I'm not just scouting for myself, but, I mean, I am just curious. Um, either a ha the draw play or any play action pass. I hate when teams pull a guard and they pass or pull a lineman and pass. That's definitely my least favorite thing to defend against. Good to know. You're going to hate practice on Thursday. Um, so, uh, 
You had you had the experience of playing cats for a little bit. Uh, last question for you here, unless Matt has something for you. You got uh, you've had a, a couple, a lot of different guys on the defensive side, right? Is any of those guys really stand out to you as coaches, or is it you're just absorbing everything from everybody? And then on top of that, do you have a favorite call on defense? Um, the person who's really stood out to me as a defensive coach has been Ray Duplin. Uh, I never really was taught anything football related until Sabercats, and then junior football for Sabercats, it wasn't so much in depth they didn't really go into it as much so having him as a coach I think really really improved my game he instantly taught you everything you needed to know about football IQ and um, what was the other part sorry do you have a favorite call on defense or favorite look that you guys like to run out of um, it's called spread avalanche uh, it's a Mackle blitz and that's definitely my favorite play on defense all right right on I think I thought it was gonna be checking out of uh, a blitz call <laughs> shots fired Jake you want to respond to that no. Nah, no. I don't want to be Fair enough, good. fair enough. Just, just better get home. I got a little little suggestion that maybe you guys should consider for your playbook. Maybe do a play called The Game. You know, a little plug. How do we sign that? <laughs> um, do a T, T, H. Uh, radio, bad radio. Yeah, but I don't know. Now I'm trying to do sign language on radio. I'm trying to give you the, We'll figure that out. Maybe we'll do a poll for that. People can send in their signs. Pictures. Send video, pictures video, on video, Facebook video, or videos. Video, you like videos? Video. Send a video. Get that out there. And you'll promote that on the Sabercats Instagram page for a sign for something with the game. And then we'll personal message you or inbox you. And you state what we'll call that for if it's offense or defense. I already got an idea. Oh, you got? Oh, yeah. Coach K, we're going to save that. We'll video that. Yeah. We'll video that. Yeah. Okay. So moving on from the Sabercats side of things, we don't have time to jump into any of the local order to jump right into CFL talk right now, fellas. Big trade happened that. <clears throat> I called. Sorry, I just want to be that asshole and say that. Sorry, I just want, <laughs> had to. I did say Argonauts. Don't get me wrong. I did say, but I did say he will be traded. I just say it one more time. I, can, I, can I say it one more time? Just kidding. I'm sorry. But let me let me tell you right now, Johnny Menzel getting traded. I think it was not a surprise base because he's not going to be a backup guy. I don't care what he's went through. I don't care what drinks he put down his throat or anything he did. Otherwise, I can't say the other thing on radio, so I'm not going to say it. So he got traded to the Montreal Alouettes. Pretty steep trade. As well, you know, they got rid of a pretty good talent, the Alouettes, with, uh, with Williams. I'm going to go around the table here before we end up with me. I'm going to start with Jamie, and we'll work our way up to Jake and, back, and to you, Coach Preems, about the reaction about Johnny Menzel. And if this is going to shift the Montreal Alouettes into being, let's say, contenders? Uh, first of all, I mean... The nice thing about CFL is almost everybody makes the playoffs. It's very hard to miss, yep. right? You get six out of nine teams that make it. So, especially in the East, especially in the East, right? Uh, uh, the last couple of years, I think a West team has crossed over to the East and taken one of those spots just because the play in the East has been so even. I think the first place team two years ago wasn't like nine and nine, which is terrible. But um, Johnny's not starting tomorrow, right? He's only been there two days. Vernon Adams is going to get the start. I think the big thing, right, losing Chris Williams was huge, right? They don't have a lot of receivers. I think B.J. Cunningham's their leading guy. He's not a bad slot guy. And then they have Ernest Jackson, who's old, man. He's getting old. He's slower. They did just get a Darius Bowman in a trade. Um, another guy, he wasn't really producing for Winnipeg very much. Or any, they had a lot of other weapons. They were running the ball like crazy. But uh, I'm kind of curious to see. I mean, Johnny just brings that X factor, right? He gets out of the pocket. He makes magic. He's gonna. There's five plays a game where it's just going to be like, whoa, sports center all the time. But... Uh, they, they already came out and said he's going to get on the field this week after two practices. I'm curious how that happens, what they do, if they just have a small package for him. Um, the big the biggest part about this trade, I think, is Mike Sherman being the coach. He was his coach at Texas A&M, so there's familiarity there. I mean, the Canadian game is so different from anything he would have done at A&M, but I, I mean, I think Johnny's going to – I mean, I think – I, I would hope they go like 500 with them, but Montreal is a bit of a firestorm right now, and you kind of never know. You know what? Uh, well, for me, I don't follow CFL football uh, too much at all, and I didn't really even know about the Manziel trade until now. So uh, for me, uh, yeah, for me, I'm excited to see it, though, because I know Windsor, had, they, Montreal had drafted one of our corners um, from Windsor as well as one of our receivers from Windsor signed to Montreal. So... I think that's an awesome thing uh, for them to be playing with someone like Johnny Menzel and being able to experience that. But I do agree with uh, Jamie where um, he will bring that X factor, like he said. He brings a level of play that's not seen in the CFL so much. Um, and like he said, simple as it is, he's going to make plays and he will 
Um, he will get himself uh, known as a good player in the CFL, in my opinion. So I do think that uh, the trade is a most likely a good thing uh, for Manziel, at least, because there's no way he was going to be sitting on the bench for another for all year for in the CFL. It wasn't going to happen. He, you're wasting so much value and losing so much value for your team by keeping someone like that on the bench. Um, so I do think it uh, was probably a good move uh, pushing him over to a new team. Yeah, I'm upset. <laughs> I was hoping Masoli. I was hoping Masoli got the high ankle sprain. Uh, he did call that because uh, you were hoping for him to get injured. That's right. Um, my, my my biggest worry is, I mean, I think, I mean, uh, I think Hamilton got better. Um, I think uh, Montreal got a talent at quarterback. Um, as we all talked about, he's exciting. We want to see him. He's electric on the field. My biggest worry is that he's jumping into a new team where at the most important position, and he's only going to be there a week, and they're going to throw him on the field. Um, I don't think it's a situation where they're to put him in that he's going to be successful potentially so I, i'm really worried and and hopefully as jamie mentioned his uh, relationship with sherman maybe some of the verbiage is the same maybe he can jump in a little bit quicker but he i was hoping to see him get a chance in hamilton um he was there for training camp he's been there the whole season he understands the offense he steps into something he's comfortable now you're gonna throw him in a situation where he's not as comfortable will he be as successful i don't think so but i hope he is um i'm hoping to see him flourish and, and get some time on the field so we'll see um, I know they had to give up Williams, but they got Bowman. I know Bowman's been a, he's been a stud in the CFL for for a long time, and uh, I know he wasn't quite being used as much in Winnipeg. So hopefully Montreal can find a fit for him and, and Johnny Manziel. But it's tough. Uh, I mean, it takes a long time to mesh, especially on offense. And now you're throwing these new guys into the mix halfway through the season. Can they pick it up that quickly? Can they, can they be successful? It's tough. But as we mentioned previously, the East is terrible. Um, you may only take uh, six wins to get into the playoffs, if that. So so hopefully, so so ho- hopefully they can pull it together quickly there, and uh, ho- hopefully it's successful. I think they're starting the third string quarterback this weekend, in Montreal. So wow, I mean, they're they're hurting. I know Drew really hurt. He hurt his hand. It looks like and, and the back. Yeah, and the backup didn't play too well. Now they're going third string, so they need someone to step up. Ho- hopefully it's Johnny can step in there and make some uh, magic happen, and. Uh, I mean, I hope he's successful. I'm just worried that he may not be um, thrown into a situation where he's going to have a week to learn the offense and to mesh with these receivers and get timing down. And, and we know, everyone knows that the pro level takes a lot more time than that. So that's my biggest worry. Uh, I mean, Masoli, you screwed up, man. <laughs> Combs called the high ankle sprain. I thought he was going to go with. Jamie, some more final thoughts before I conclude it. Yeah, I think, honestly, Ham- Hamilton came out of this trade like they realized that there was huge value for Johnny getting Chris Williams back there now you got Brandon Banks like that those two guys alone right impossible covers um, and uh, Chris Williams like coming from Hamilton before right the I mean June Jones is different verbiage there but uh, if Masoli can kind of figure it out and start getting guys in the end zone man Hamilton got a lot better just from this trade they definitely did and now you gotta think of it this aspect just to kind of conclude the topic to veer us into our break it's Dave McKay alongside Matt Primo Jamie Antonello and Jacob Fecto a special guest from the Sabercats uh, talking a little now with the Johnny Menzel thing and I shouldn't say thing that's a very improper language it's a Johnny Menzel trade rather I apologize but Hamilton got Williams and got a player for nothing they, tra- they traded or they signed Menzel right you sign him he had his rights to see if all these signed him. Now they turn to Montreal. They bring in a good talent in Williams, and they bring in a package deal. And they kind of come on, on top of this 150% because they have brought in this talent. It didn't cost the organization anything extra. And now they had a very good quarterback this year who, whom is starting that's outplayed Menzel, obviously, in practice. Must have outplayed him from the start, which is why he's playing. I don't care how they had to fare Menzel or Whittleman or how they had to kind of hold off or what the reason was for him not starting. But... Due to him not starting, someone else was able to step up to the plate. So now, you think Johnny Manziel's agent would want him to sit on the bench this year? I don't give a damn what happened last or the, with the NFL. I don't care what rehabilitation side effects he's having. No, the agent wants him to get to the NFL. That's the goal. He wants to get back to the NFL. He wants to create that success story. He wants the money fingers not to roll in the Montreal Alouettes. He wants it to be off the Miami Dolphins or the Bears or somewhere where he can be in the NFL and have a chance to start. And this year, for him to be a backup, that would not put him a step further. It might even put him a step back from having that rust and having that main live action. So practice is different than games, and Jake can attest this. When you're playing a practice, a little bit more loose, right? Sometimes you got the competitive edge, but when you're in that game, you're in a you're in a moment that's different than any kind of practice. It's different than any kind of simulation. Anything else 
with matter of him sitting on the bench was not happening this year. And if people think that the agent of Johnny Manziel had nothing to do with this trade, I think you're crazy too. Because I'm sure he called and said, okay, when's he starting? When's he starting? When's he starting? You don't think Johnny went in the office? Okay, what do I have to do to start? What do I have to do to start? Okay, look, I'm not losing. Okay, the guy's doing well. Okay, look, I think it's best we don't go media with this. It doesn't look bad. It's okay if we get a trade done. And the value was there for Manziel. The Tiger Cats definitely come ahead. But if the Alouettes can get the Manziel that we know can play, that he played at college, he'll be a weapon out there and he'll make the Alouettes immediate contenders. My final thoughts with it. I'll give your reaction with that quick before we go to break. Yeah, Hamilton just better hope that uh, Masoli doesn't get injured now. Um, uh-huh. that, that might be the, the big worry. Um, yeah, I mean, I know. I kind of agree with Dave that his, his agent may have pushed this, but he is up here. He has to be up for two years, right? He, he can't move down there. So he did have another year, and, and he could have waited a little bit longer. I just hope that he's going to be in a situation where he is able to be successful in Montreal and uh, it's not too too fast, too soon, where he's learned this offense and he's going to struggle because I don't think that will help his stock either. So we'll see. I mean, uh, it would be exciting to see him get on the field. That, that's what my whole wish has been the whole time, just to see this guy play. So uh, and then we're gonna get we're gonna get to see that. So I'll definitely be tuning in, Jake. You should start watching more CFL football. I'm kind of disappointing in you, um, but uh, no, it should be it should be exciting to see. And who knows? Hopefully they can uh, make a little run and make it in the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. I mean the comfortability thing, and the biggest thing for him is getting back to the NFL. You just got to put stuff on tape, right? Yeah. Like you got to produce. You got to put stuff on tape. But uh, just one final thought: it'd be kind of cool if he stuck it out in Montreal next year. And we got to see him throwing passes to Alec Morrison once he got healthy. That'd be kind of fun for us. Yeah, we need, we for, need a very good plug. We may very need to get plug. we may need to get some tickets, Alex, and some uh, <laughs> locker room passes. <laughs> I take a picture with Menzel. <laughs> I'd probably bring a beer to chug with him too. Sorry, Johnny, I shouldn't say that. Not anymore. No, anyway, no, he doesn't do it anymore. But definitely, I couldn't agree more. See him two years in CFL to transition himself, hopefully back to the NFL. I'd like seeing people succeed, even though it's Johnny who, you know, went through a lot. Obviously, a lot of people have their own issues, so Johnny's trying to get everything together, and you know he's on the right path. And right now, getting the opportunity in Montreal, hopefully, it works out for him. Everyone likes a comeback story. Everyone does. That's a movie. When you're a producer, that's a movie. (laughs) You're you're thinking money right there, not just money fingers. Fellas, we're going to take a break. We have Nathan Inch coming on by. I'm going to give everyone a reminder. Nathan Inch is our WWE character that people have long awaited. I think it's been exactly a year to the day that I've basically announced Nathan. He had a child, a lot of things going on at work, and, you know, it's been summer. Hard to get a hold of everybody. Nathan finally comes on by and spends his five minutes in the ring with Inch. And let me tell you, he has an electrifying segment. Very exciting. We're going to have Inch on sporadically throughout the show just to make people laugh about uh, about his character. And also he's going to provide the expert insight on the WWE as he's very passionate about the WWE. And then after Inch departs, Anthony Greco is going to stop by quickly for about uh, about eight to ten minutes. I know we aimed for about five, but we got to ten. Uh, we're going to get. We're probably going to get to ten. Sorry. So, uh, with Anthony after that, we'll come back for is when all of us are going to come back out, and then we'll transition right into the topic that Anthony and I are discussing about the Toronto Raptors for the round table. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back here live from Sports Center Bar and Grill, live on thegamesportshow.podbean.com and www.thegameshow.com. Don't go anywhere. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional sponsor, an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center rated top sports bar for the second year in a row. That Sports Center enjoyed their famous 75 cent wing night along with delicious Molson products on tap, along with a great atmosphere and other great food options available as well. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. The Game Sports Show would like to thank a list of additional sponsors. North Shore Sports and Auto, new location located on 647 McDonald Avenue, Sault Ste. Marie. A family-owned and operated business with doing business in Sault Ste. Marie for over 10 years. Loads of products available for your enjoyment for all seasons. North Shore Sports and Auto, we understand the importance of quality service and products. And we work hard to ensure that all customers have a positive experience before and after each and every sale. North Shore Sports and Auto, meeting all of your new and pre-owned equipment needs. Special thanks to the Salon. The Salon, located on 589 Second Line East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Owned and operated by Mike Cuglietta. Book your appointment today at 705-941-9191 or via online at https colon dash dash the salon dot as dot me dash. The Salon, making the suit beautiful one haircut at a time. As well as a shout out to the Superior Pro Shop. The Superior Pro Shop, located inside the Community First Credit Union Superior Arena on 285 Northern Avenue East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Owned and operated by Jeremy Paquin and ran by Larry Monroe. 
Superior Pro Shop for over 40 years meet all of your skate sharpening, skate repair, and hockey needs. Also to Discover the Canvas. Discover the Canvas. Located on 317 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. A beautiful new renovated building owned and operated by expert artist and Sioux native Katrina Tipito. Katrina taking her talents of the ink in Sault Ste. Marie and truly creating the best and most realistic art locally. Call Katrina today at 705-450-8099 or email her at discoverthecanvas at gmail.com to book your tattoo or consultation today. Hi, it's Craig Hartsburg, former NHL player and NHL coach. Welcome to the Game Sports Show. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show. Special a little segment here. I finally got Anthony Greco on tonight. And we're here at Sports Center, packed and busy night at Sports Center. As you hear some singing, some stuff going on in the background. I got the one, I got the only, Nathan Inch. It took six months for fuck's sakes to get this guy here. He'd been on Matt Leaf, Pat Leaf, whatever you want to call it. And the wrestling segment, we're going to do a little fun segment. This is for Scotty Neeson and Butch Davis. Love wrestling. They've been asking where the hell you've been. I finally got you here. I want you to sit here and tell the millions of fans what they can expect from the one, the only legend, Nathan Inch. Well, I'll tell you right now, Kegger, it doesn't matter what they want. It doesn't matter what they can expect. I don't care. All that matters is what I want, what I expect from the WWE. And you know what? My demands haven't been met. Programming's been awful. Uh, the booking's been terrible. Pay-per-views have been shells of them former selves. It's awful. What do you have to say about it? I think the WWE has been an absolute joke since 2005. Yeah, five, four, three, I don't know. Uh, end of the Attitude Era kind of killed it for me. It's hard to say when exactly it went shit, but uh, it's pretty awful right now. And uh, you know what? They got good talent right now, and it's sad because uh, if they just stepped up the Attitude, it would be good. Now, let me ask you. We watched WrestleMania at your house. WWE can't pay you enough to go there to wrestle right now. Because you're too good. You're focusing on smashing balls, sniping goals. You know, you're not singing tonight, which is actually a bonus. But we watched WrestleMania at your house. I want to get your reaction to WrestleMania. We're going to give the listeners a little tease about what you can bring to the show at time to time on a sporadic basis. Uh, WrestleMania was good. Troy, F off. <laughs> Rob, Got some fans. Yeah, WrestleMania, my fans are uh, harassing me. WrestleMania was good. I thought uh, the whole Ronda thing was well executed. Kurt Angle uh, in the ring again was good. It was a little bit of nostalgia, a little bit of uh, new stuff. Uh, it worked well. Uh, Triple H still brings it. Uh, they know how to build a show. And it was good. Uh, but uh, overall, the pay-per-views since WrestleMania have been awful. Like completely awful. Uh, the best, the best PPVs I've seen since WrestleMania have been NXT, and it's all about uh, Gargano, really, right now in NXT. He's uh, he's the biggest draw for me right now. Big words. Now, when are we expect you to go on the ring? Because that's what we're gonna bring to this show. Is your character, your reaction on WWE? This is just a sneak peek because we can get you on on a rarity basis. You're the expert when it comes to WWE. I brought you on six months ago. I've seen this the first time. I want the listeners to get your character and just what we can expect from you going forward before we let you go because you only have about five minutes or so here tonight. We got a short time. You got a child to take care of. Go. Yeah, my character is uh, currently in limbo, no contract. Uh, I don't got much to offer. I had a baby, and uh, that's about it. It's a baby, a beautiful girl, a very beautiful and cool girl. Now, going forward, we'll get you on the show when we can, but do you think the WWE will ever improve, or do you think it's starting to go downhill? Last thoughts. Uh, uh, not as long as it's PG. As long as it's PG, it'll never draw ratings like it did during the Monday Night Wars. Uh, time frame, say, between uh, 97 to 01-ish. 
and uh, it'll never uh, it'll never do that again until they uh, they get back to pushing the envelope. And so I'll let you go. Quick, dirty segments, I like to say. Dust kind of segment, we can call it. Maybe I'll let you say that. I appreciate you stopping by finally here at Sports Center Bar and Grill for the Wednesday edition of our show. Hopefully we get you on sometime soon, pal. Dust. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional sponsor, an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center rated top sports bar for the second year in a row. At Sports Center, enjoy their famous 75-cent wing night along with delicious Molson products on tap, along with a great atmosphere and other great food options available as well. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Canadian franchise Boston Pizza. Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, located on 601 Great Northern Road, Sault Ste. Marie. Come in and join Boston Pizza for its numerous specials that are offered. After 9 p.m. daily, come in to Boston Pizza for $9 schooners, $4 rail drinks, and delicious food. Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, you're among friends. Hi, this is Joe Bowen, and you're listening to the Game Sports Show from Sault Ste. Marie. We're here live at Sports Center Bar and Grill, and I've brought somebody in live on location as a special guest right now. I'm excluding Jamie Antello and Matt Primo right now. Just to get a three to five minute conversation here with a guy who's a basketball expert who I've been waiting to get on the show and you finally agreed to come on the show. My good friend, Anthony Greco. And the conversation that's invading the show tonight is the Toronto Raptors. Kawhi Leonard, Danny Green to the Raptors. DeMar DeRozan, Jakob Pudel, and a first round pick protected in the top 20. If it doesn't go to the top 20, it's the second rounders to the San Antonio Spurs. DeMar has a lot of years left on his contract. Kawhi has one. They traded their franchise player. Someone who is loyal. There's a lot of things. Anthony Greco, I need to get your input on the Toronto Raptors trade with the San Antonio Spurs. First of all, Ronaldo signed with Juventus for the biggest tra- contract I've ever seen in my life. So that's more important. But <laughs> um, Kawhi Leonard will be a Raptor for one year, and he will leave after. Wow, that's your, that's your prediction? That's my prediction. Lakers after? What's that? You're going to go to the Lakers after? Probably, because he's only protected for one year on the Raptors. And then he's an unrestricted free agent after the one year. So he can do whatever he wants. So there's literally no reason for him to stay a Raptor. And I don't see why he would stay a Raptor, because they're not going to do anything anyways. I think this is a terrible trade for the Raptors. I think they needed to build on what they already had. And they're lucky that LeBron had left the East. <laughs> yeah, so oh this, yeah. This was their year to actually do something. And they got rid of arguably their best player for a player that has had injury problems. Two years now? Two years? Yeah, two years of injury problems. And is unreliable at best. So I think the Raptors have kind of screwed themselves in this. Obviously, time will tell, but I think uh, Masai was too ready to make a huge deal when he didn't really want to, like, he didn't know what the huge deal should really be. I think DeMar, like, obviously DeMar is an issue for sure. He's not, like, a leader. He's not a head, like, a your top scorer, but I just think that that was not the move to make. I think Kawhi is not the good player that they want, and I don't think that this trade will make any difference on what the team is going to be in the future. Uh, and I think Kawhi is only going to be there for a year before leaving, anyways. So I think this is a big step back for the Raptors in general. Let me ask you this: They say Kawhi Leonard. This is what the experts say that he's a top three player when healthy. I kind of disagree because you got LeBron, Durant, and Curry. Well, when was the last time he was healthy? 2016 when he won the fi- or maybe the last time he won the Finals MVP. Exactly. But then like all these questions have been asked of him of like, is he trying? Like, does he care? Where does he want to play? Like, as soon as all that stuff comes up with a player, it makes you question whether or not you want him because like a motor, like your, a player's motivation shouldn't like have to deal with the team that they're on. You should be like expecting the best from them every night. But with Kawhi, you honestly you don't know whether he wants to be there or not. Like, is he going to be there next year? Like, we don't know. We really don't know. So I think 
The Spurs won big in this trade, and uh, the Raptors, a year from right now, are going to be in not a good position, in my opinion. So they're not going to re-sign him, is what you're saying? He's not going to re-sign. I think... I, I, you don't think he's re-signing at all? No, he's not going to re-sign. No. Not at all? No. Not a chance in hell? I think the Raptors come fifth or sixth this year. I think... Um, really? They're not going to finish first in the East after this no. trade? No way. Wow. No. Boston's coming first in the East for sure. Um... I think uh, I think so. Boston for sure will come first. Milwaukee will come second. I think the Pistons will come third, wow. and then it's a crapshoot after that. Who knows? It really doesn't matter because in the end of the day, the West is going to win no matter what. Golden State. Yeah, it's going to be Golden State. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I really think it, it's a, it's a meaningless trade for me personally because neither team is a championship contender. Uh, and uh, at the end of the, the day, though, I think DeMar wins in the trade because now he gets the big contract and he, uh, he ends up on a team that's going to be way more competitive. I think with less pressure as well because I think San Antonio, they just, it's just a looser like, kind of thing there. And plus, you have a way better coach than Greg Popovich, too. Oh, great. Um, he's, the, he's the goat of coaching, right? One of the best right? coaches of all time. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I just don't think Kawhi is just not the player. Kawhi would be a great supportive player for any team, but he's not going to be the player for any team. They, apparently the last thing before we let you go, I know it's quick for you here, Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green are two defensive-minded players, let's say. Let, let's go with that. And they say Kawhi is a top three, a top five. Toronto so like, doesn't have anyone that can score now. That's their huge Except issue. Except Kyle. And Kyle not even. So what? Like, Cole, like Kyle Lowry isn't a huge score to begin with. Like you can't rely on him to score. Like look at him. If you watch Kyle Lowry play in the playoffs, he's not elite. Like he's not gonna take over a game. No, he's he not. Does not have the skill to take over the game. So you can't re- like. I just feel like sure you have a great defensive presence there with like Kawhi and all these guys, but like if you make it to the playoffs, you have no one to score. You have no like. You have no half court offense now. Demar could at least drive it and like take it to the hole, but I think now you get rid of all your half court offense. Like Kawhi can do it sometimes, but I just don't think he's reliable in that situation. Wow, strong words from the basketball expert. I've been yeah. trying to get on this show, yeah. and I got you for some words tonight. And I know you have limited time, yeah. but you know what? So you, let me get this straight before we let you go. Kawhi stays one year, yeah. goes to LA or somewhere after, probably LA. Probably LA. The Raptors don't finish top three. No. They don't make the finals. No. And this trade was a mistake by the Raptors. Is that what you're saying? 100%. 100%. 100% got it. 100%. Wow, deep words. How about last question then for you? What are the odds of the Raptors flipping Kawhi to the Lakers for Ingram and Kuzma? I think that would be just as bad. Like They're not in a winning situation right now. Even if they got Kuzma and Ingram, it's not going to make a difference. Like It's not going to make them amazing. It's just going to... Everything they're going to do right now is just going to be, like, they're going to have the same level of talent, basically, at the end of the day. Yeah. I just don't think one of these moves is going to make them way better than the other. It's just going to be, like, status. You're going to see, like, maybe the same result, maybe a little bit worse next year. Even if they flipped Kawhi for those guys, you'll see maybe the same result, maybe a little bit worse. It really doesn't make a difference. Because at the end of the day, they can't compete with a team like Golden State. No, definitely. No one can, I don't think, anyways. No, they can't compete with, like, um, they won't be able to compete with L.A. They won't be able to compete with Houston. Like, it really doesn't matter. The East is so weak right now. I still don't think they'll be able to compete with Boston. 76ers. Even, even Milwaukee and the 76ers. So, like, I mean, even the Pistons are coming up, too. Yeah, so they are. Absolutely. So, we're, I think we're looking at a fifth, sixth place, maybe. Wow. First, first round, they'll be out for sure. Wow. And um, I don't know. Like, I just I just don't think that, like, Masai, like, obviously, like, everyone loves Masai, yeah, but I just. He's a, he's a good GM. Let's he's, a, real. He's, yeah, a, yeah. he's a great guy. I don't think he's a great GM. I think he made this move because he was pressured to make a move. And he said change needed to happen, and it yeah, happened. For sure, it needed to happen. But I think you're dealing with the wrong people, though. You have to deal 
Kyle Lowry. You have to deal Valanciunas. You have to deal these guys. Not DeRozan. DeRozan wasn't the issue. Also, Dwayne Casey wasn't the issue. Like the Raptors, oh, the, year. The, the Raptors are making a lot of bad moves right now. I think it's just going to be a downhill spiral for probably a couple of years now. And like obviously, time will tell, but I just don't think it's going to happen for them anytime soon. I love that. I'm happy I got. I finally got you on the show. I won't keep you much longer because Cristiano got more. Ronaldo, biggest contract in the history of ever, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I like that's that. Shout fun. out to Cristiano Ronaldo. That's how much Greco wants to give a shout out to him. But I had to get your words. We're gonna let you go. I appreciate you finally putting your comments on the show. Uh, Jamie, Matt, and myself are gonna dive into a little bit more here after we go back from our break. So once again. Thanks for coming on by tonight, Greco. No problem. Anytime. I'm happy that happened. Finally, it took some time. Very but Dave McCaig here live at Sports Center Bar and Grill. We'll be right back. Matt and Jamie are going to dive into this trade a little bit more, so don't go anywhere. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional sponsor, an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center rated top sports bar for the second year in a row. At Sports Center, enjoy their famous 75-cent wing night along with delicious Molson products on tap, along with a great atmosphere and other great food options available as well. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. Get Wicked Catering from the crew at the Wicked Sister. We like to think of ourselves as foodies. While our favorite foods are paired with a beer tasting at the Wicked Sister, you can now have the same creative menu for your next catered business luncheon, family get-together, wedding, or holiday party. Our white truffle risotto appeals to your gluten-free and vegetarian guests. Add sautéed shrimp or freshly grilled chicken for a pop of protein. Or let us build you a custom menu to suit your needs. From plated events of 15 to buffets for 200, the Wicked Sister will cater your event with tapas, snacks, craveables, or a full sit-down dinner. The Wicked Sister, where you'll be treated like family, whether you like it or not. Hey, this is Paul Maurice from the Winnipeg Jets, and you're listening to the Game Sports Show. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show. Yours truly, David McKeg, live at Sports Center Bar and Grill, and we're here for their wing night. Wings from 4 until midnight. 75 cent wings. The best wings in town. The Sioux's best sports bar for the second year in a row. And the home to the Game Sports Show. One of the many homes of the Game Sports Show. And actually been a part of the Game Sports Show since 2015. The end of 2015 here at Sports Center Bar and Grub went into 2016. I'm bringing back the fellas from the top of the show. Matt Primo, Jacob Fecto, who was our special guest from Sabercats, who's going to be sticking around for the table. Obviously, you know, we had a, just had a good interview with Nathan Inch and with Anthony Greco. It was obviously a lot of good times there. And obviously the guy who was with me at the beginning, to my right, Jamie Antonello. It'll be us three having our roundtable discussion, continuing from the topic that Anthony and I just discussed. And we're going to dive right into it, fellas, because this is the big topic of the show. You know, here on the Wednesday edition, we have In the Pocket, we have basketball and variety of sports. And here on this round table, we're just going to go around, spin random topics. Maybe football will get brought back up again. Maybe dancing will get brought up. Maybe tennis. Maybe golf. Maybe ping pong. Who knows? That's the beauty of the round table. But we're going to dive and continue, I guess you should say, right into with the Raptors. Kawhi Leonard. Danny Green to the Raptors. DeRozan. Poodle. And a first. Protected first. Top 20, if not that, that goes second round picks to the Spurs. Okay? Now, the big question is if Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green are going to be healthy, one, especially Kawhi Leonard, that's their biggest concern. Trading a franchise player with DeMar DeRozan. The Raptors making changes where maybe the changes didn't need to occur. A lot of tables, there are also a lot of tables. Yeah, we have a lot of tables here at Sports Center, but a lot of topics involving this topic we're going to bring up. And, fellas, I'm going to go around. I'm not going to start here because i got a whole lot to say about it. I'd rather conclude with it because I am fired up in a good way and a bad way. I'm on the fence, and that's my teaser with it. I'm actually on the fence with excitement and a little bit of disappointment because I really don't know where to go with this trade. I really, when I saw the trade, I had the mixed emotions. But I'm going to start, and I'm actually going to go to our special guest first, Jacob Fecto. Give us your perspective on the trade. What you think the Raptors are going to come out of this trade, same with the Spurs, did you like the trade? Pissed about the trade? Surprised about the trade? All the above, my friend. Um, for me, I'm not the happiest about the trade, but I am also very surprised about the trade. I didn't expect them to get rid of DeMar DeRozan, um, who I really do find is a franchise player. 
Uh, I think the Spurs lucked out with getting DeMar DeRozan. Yes, they lost a crucial weapon of their uh, team as well, probably the best two-way player in the NBA um, every day in and out. Uh, but like uh, he said, the the biggest thing is, one, is Kawhi Leonard going to be healthy? And two, is he going to resign? After the year, is he going to come back? And that's my biggest concern. I think that if uh, Kawhi Leonard does decide to stick around and stay with the Raptors, then... Uh, kudos to the Raptors, and I think they, they they defeated the odds because I feel like a lot of people don't think he's going to resign, uh, myself included. So for me, I'm not very uh, happy about the trade just because I'm worried that they traded a franchise player for a trial basis. Um, I still don't think that um, the Raptors are going to be a uh, championship team even with Kawhi Leonard, so uh, that's my main reason without uh, with them trading away to Marta Rosen. I don't think it was something that is going to cause an immediate fix to the program at all. Pretty strong words from Jacob. A lot of strong words with involving this trade. And we're going to go to Prem's next, Coach Matt Primo. I know you and I and Jamie were discussing on the group when that trade happened. There's a lot of different fire exchange. Even Dustin Grondon chimed in with his reaction about what should happen, which I liked. And we'll share that near the end with Dustin shared even about uh, maybe the Raptors trying to flip Kawhi Leonard, but I think that's absolutely silly. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think that was the intention of the trade. But Preems, your reaction, buddy. So my, my initial reaction was similar to Jacob. I, I was like, this isn't a good trade. Um, all the reports led to that Kawhi wants to be in L.A., he, he doesn't want to be in San Antonio. He doesn't want to be anywhere else. He wants to be in L.A. So my initial thoughts were, why would you trade um, one superstar that wants to be there for another superstar that doesn't want to be there? And now you got a guy that doesn't want to be there, and how is he going to perform? How is he going to contribute? And then the more and the more that I thought about it, um, I looked back and I was like, but they've tried with DeMar. They've tried to win a championship with DeMar and Kyle and, and Dwayne Casey, and it hasn't worked. They couldn't get out of the East. They couldn't get past LeBron. Now, LeBron's gone. Maybe they had a better shot this year to get to the East final and to the championship, maybe. But they've tried with the same group of characters for f about five years, and it wasn't successful. So the more and more I thought about it, uh, I was like, man, I sort of warmed up for the trade a little bit more. And I think there's two ways that the Raptors win this trade. One, they re-sign Kawhi after this year. Two, they win a championship this year, yeah, that, those, which is going to be tough. I mean, how do, you, how do you beat Golden State? But, but you look at the roster, and they were the first team in the East last year. They, they probably got better with this trade. I, I mean, it, it's very close. I mean, I think Kawhi and DeMar, they're both superstars, like we mentioned. So, but they probably got a little bit better. Everyone thinks that maybe Kawhi is the best two-way player in the league, so maybe they get a bit better. Um, but I, I am warming up to a little bit more if they can convince him to, to stay and sign in Toronto. The biggest thing is going to be Masai being able to sell him on, on the fact that Toronto is a big-time market. He can, be, he can be a superstar here. You have, a, you have a, a big city, a global city behind you. You have a whole country behind you. Um, can we sell him on that? Uh, and, and the fact that we have a chance to win in the East every year. The East, like, same as in the CFL we're talking about. The East isn't as strong as the West. So you have a chance to make it out. I mean, there, there's two other teams there, Boston and Philadelphia, and they're not as strong as any of the teams in the West that contend every year. So it is a little bit easier. So maybe you sell on the fact that, that you can win here. Um, you have a country behind you. You have a, a, like a big time city, and, and maybe it, maybe it works out. Maybe he stays long term. I think you win the trade. Um, I got a good laugh, and uh, I was on Twitter or Instagram or something. And one of the quotes was that uh, Kawhi and Demar both contributed the same amount in the playoffs last year, and obviously Kawhi was out and didn't play. Um, Demar he, he didn't show up in playoffs. He was great in the regular season, but when when it came down to it in uh, the clutch and in when it when it mattered the most in the playoffs. He, he would find a way to shy away from the spotlight or, or not contribute the same way he did in the regular season. So the more and more I sit back, and, and if they can sign him or, or if maybe if, like win a championship, which is going to be tough to do, but I think I think it is a successful trade. But uh, you have to give credit to Messiah for trying something different. Um, you can't just keep doing the same thing and expect different results, right? So at least he's trying. we got a superstar. Um, if uh, maybe the city embraces him and he, he likes it, he sticks around. And uh, you have a legitimate superstar for, for a long time. So who knows? But uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be an exciting season. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot more media coverage in Toronto from the rest of the NBA potentially. So it should be exciting to see. And so going to you because I'm saving myself for last. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I have a pretty similar take to uh, Preem's there. But uh, I just love, like, the Toronto fans just trying to 
hang on to glimmers of hope still. I mean, I, I don't disagree with the fact that, I mean, they needed to do something different, right? DeMar hadn't got it done. And, I mean, he was rattled with the way the whole thing went down. He went to Twitter. He went to Instagram. Like, he let everybody know that he was not happy. And uh, I think he's, he's going to ball out in San Antonio for them. But they did upgrade, in my opinion, as long as Danny Green and Kawhi are healthy. That's the big thing, right? Danny just came out and said he played with a torn groin all last year, and the San Antonio doctors missed that. And they just figured it out on his exit physical. So who knows, like, if he's going to need surgery, if he's going to be full speed, like... Who knows, but it's the stuff isn't, yeah, whoever the doctors in San Antonio are, oof, like, let's just move on there. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I love that the fans in Toronto are just hanging on. It's like that picture that got posted with the GM, Masai, and Kawhi, and Kawhi has the smallest smile. They're like, look, he's happy to be here. Well, I mean, that remains to be seen. I mean, Masai is super confident that he's going to sell Kawhi on Toronto this year. And, I mean, if he does and he stays long-term, awesome. But those are literally the only two ways that Toronto wins this trade. If he's gone after this year and they if they win a, if they win a ship and he leaves, we'll be rattled, but we got a championship, right? So you got that. If you lose, if you don't win and he leaves, that's absolute worst case. Well, worst case would be he just doesn't play. But, I mean, yeah, it's uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. See, I must say, guys, and while I'm doing this, i saying this, I got producer ghost on the side. It's going to pop up a little fun fact, okay? And before I say my reason, Sportsnet Instagram this, okay? I give credit to Sportsnet on this. And the, the, the heading was, choose your rap, they're starting five. Okay? Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Fleet, great year last year. Derlin Wright, Danny Green. I know... Uh, I know I always ditch, I always butcher his last name. Sorry. Shaquem, Leonard, Valanchunas, Abaka. All of those players, all nine of those guys are starters in the NBA, in my opinion. Are they stars? No, I'm not saying they're going to be stars. But the big thing was Kyle. That's an all-star. Kawhi Leonard. That's an all-star. Serge Ibaka has defensive skill and is a very good basketball player. You know, you got Wright, who's had a great season last year, and Red Fan Fleet could arguably be sixth man of the year last year. If he didn't get hurt, he's playing sixth man of the year. So I got to say to you right now, having a roster like that, when people tell me that the Toronto Raptors are not going to be a top, top three team in the East, I get very rattled, but I get their... No one understands their division. You got the Sixers and Celtics in the same division as the Raptors. All right, you got the same people in the same division. The Sixers are going to be very good next year. I think the Sixers are going to be better than the Celtics. Okay, I actually think they're going to be. I, I, I'm trusting that process sticking through right now. I, I love what Philly brings to the table. The Bucks. I love a Tonson Kumpo. That's my favorite basketball player in the in the NBA right now. People are asking if I already bought a Kawhi Leonard jersey. No, I have not bought a Kawhi Leonard jersey. I don't even know if I own a basketball Raptors jersey T, to be totally honest with you. Okay? I support them by having them and following them and being a fan. And I'll say right now, the trade with Tamar DeRozan and Kawhi Leonard, there was reasons why this went down. And I'm going to say it right now. Masai Ujiri and DeMar DeRozan did not see eye to eye. And it started since last year that's been known. He got rumored to get traded last year. There is an issue there that we do not know about in the professional level. Dwayne Casey getting moved. The guy has been there over five years. He was a coach of the year this year. Could not beat LeBron. And at the end of the day, couldn't get past LeBron and couldn't get to that next step. And that he blamed the coaches and some of the leaders in that culture. Maybe DeMar and Dwayne. People got to start asking themselves, were they an issue? It doesn't look like it from our end. When you see DeMar in the social media and Kyle all playing and being all upset. But people don't look into little things. Look at DeMar when they lost. I've never seen someone have a negative attitude in an interview. He always seemed to be negative. Yes, you lose. But there's the true character leaders and star players that shake that off. And Kawhi Leonard, if you look at his interviews, he's always positive, always looking at the team performance. I think he's a true leader. And arguably when he's healthy, top five player in the NBA. Maybe even top three if you want to put him in the same conversation as Durant, Curry, and LeBron. Maybe. Maybe. 
not points wise. Offensively, LeBron and Curry are going to absolutely demo Leonard in a game. But you put the defensive side, Kawhi Leonard's the best two way player in this game, as Jake touched on. If Kawhi plays a full season, healthy, and I mean full season between 75 to 82 games, okay, I'm not going to say entirety full season. Maybe there's rest in there, you never know. That is a bonus because you're having the best, one of the best, sorry, players in the NBA wearing a jersey. Kyle now gets a little bit of pressure off his shoulders. Kawhi doesn't have a lot on, but this also may open up room for Van Fleet. Right? It might even open up room for Valanchunas to ease up the pressure because that guy has been an absolute sieve. I'm sorry. I almost call him Vakaitis on the court. Okay? Like, that's what I feel like calling him. I feel like that is – when I was looking at the offseason, the change I project, projected was Valanchunas, Kyle, and maybe even Abaka. Those are the three guys I was thinking maybe some change for and getting a guy like Leonard or a talent like that. Did they try to offer Kyle for Kawhi? I'm sure they did. I'm sure that was the first, sure option. Was the first option. Absolutely. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it went this way. and People got to look at it. I'm on both sides of the fence here. When I looked at that trade, I said, oh, Jesus, why? Why? Okay, well, it doesn't make sense. And I'm sitting there thinking, wait a second. Kawhi is healthy. He's way better than DeRozan is. I'm sorry. I know DeRozan is a franchise player, but Kawhi is absolute filth. He's wild. He's great. He'll set the present on the court. He's going to be always have guys on him, and it's going to open up Kyle. I like the option. I didn't like the Dwayne Casey firing, but the way Nick Nurse is talking in the media and the way he's doing some of his development camps and doing stuff, the guy is a strict and he means business. I like that. The team needs a coach that isn't as going to run down the sidelines and yell at refs the entire game like Dwayne Casey all animated he is. Nick Nurse is going to be sitting there. He's going to be pointing. He's going to be it's going to be a much more structured team defensively now with Green, with Leonard, Abaka, those three weapons on defense. You can't name a better trio defensively than that in the NBA. There's not. There's not a trio better defensively than having Leonard, Abaka, and obviously having Danny Green. And you have Siakam into that. Yeah, it's Siakam. Yeah, and it's a good. I honestly think the Raptors have still the top team in the Eastern Conference. I'm going to say it. I'm sorry, Anthony Greco. Sorry to the guys on this table. The Raptors are finishing first this year. Kawhi stays healthy. They finish first. Kawhi doesn't stay healthy. I back up what Greco says and say that the Raptors finish mid to bottom and they're out first round. And then this trade looks bad. If they don't re-sign Kawhi Leonard, to be honest with you, Preems, I don't fully care as much as I thought I would because they removed a big contract with DeMar and there's something there that we don't know as fans with DeMar and Masai and I think if this trade doesn't work out and the Raptors don't do well, Masai has already booked his ticket to get fired anyways and you know what, he's one of the best GMs in basketball in my opinion, one of the greatest sports minds in basketball in my opinion okay, he's wanted by many teams so he won't be jobless long if that happens Okay, so it's a risk that Masai took. He took that change. He changed two guys that we didn't think were a problem, but now that I think about it, they may have been part of it. This brings in somebody who's going to be very structured defensively. Nick Nurse being there on the coach's side, it, he has a weapon to use now, and he's a very defensive-minded coach. People don't know that about Nurse. He strictly stays defense. Now he has all the weapons provided to that. Kyles might be a guy who can still drain all the points. Leonard can still get you points. I can go on for minutes upon more minutes. I've already, I think, went here for almost seven minutes talking. But at the end of the day, I actually, I'm on the fence more about liking the trade, even if Leonard only stays one year. Yeah, it sucks if he leaves next year. But we got to look at the plus side where DeMar DeRozan now, his contract's off the books. Very hefty contract. There's other players you can offer that money to that may be better in the long run. Kawhi's going to give you that chance to win now. The East is open than it's ever been. Masai took a risk, and I'm happy at least he cares and took that risk because it shows he wants to win. Yakuputo is going to be great, but there's guys who are playing better than him, and I like how that first round pick's protected. I love that. If it's two seconds, I can handle that. So imagine Kawhi, who's healthy this year, gets more points than DeRozan, and they make it to the conference finals or the championship. Even if they don't resign him, that's a win in my trade in my books. I'm on board with the Kawhi Atlanta trade. I like it now more than I don't like it. I'll get some more final thoughts around the table. I'm sure you guys got some things to touch on what I said there. Yeah, I definitely think it's high risk, high reward, as you mentioned. So, I mean, the payoff could be there, right? He could, he could win a championship. He could stay. Um, and, and as you mentioned, the contract comes off the books. If the Raptors are looking to rebuild, it's good. The, the 2019 free agent class is going to be good. It's loaded. So th- there are some positives there, and there is some, some forward thinking um, as well. So, so, so I agree. I mean, as, as I said, I'm warming up to it. The more and more things go on here, I am warming up to it. Uh, I mean, they weren't getting the result with the guys they had, so so you got to change something. So um, I, I would have preferred to be Lowry, but obviously 
probably Spurs didn't want Lowry. Um, they wanted they want Demar, and for good reason. He's a good player, but uh, he couldn't get the wraps over the top. So hopefully Kawhi can. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to add. Uh, the only thing I'll say is uh, you were touching on Nick Nurse there doing all the right things. To be fair, nobody knows what Nick Nurse is going to be like here. He's, he's, this is There's brand videos. new for him. There's videos, right? It's the same. We're, we're grasping at straws, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you're just hopeful fans, hoping for something to happen. I mean, really, we won't know till the season starts in October. Like that. I want to get the listeners' reaction on the Raptors trade. Don't hesitate to comment below on the Podbean page or on the Facebook post or any of our social media. See if you think the Raptors are winners in this trade, losers, or if you just can't decide. Yeah, because I'm still in the kitchen, just can't decide, but as Preem said, I'm warming up more and more, as I think we all should be. Open to the idea of risk. I'm all for it, especially if you're a Toronto fan. We're more than all for it. Jamie, I'm going to go to you next, just to bring on something to our roundtable discussion. You can go back to football, continue basketball, whatever you like, my friend. Well, I'm kind of just going to throw out a bunch of football topics, and you guys can just jump on something as you like it here. I mean, training camps have opened. Uh, There's some notables that are holding out, right? Aaron Donald's not there. Um, uh, He's probably one of the biggest guys not there. Running backs are starting to sign contracts. Uh, Rookie deals are being fully guaranteed, which is nuts. You look at, like, a guy like Saquon, his, his deal... With incentives and bonuses and stuff, he's going to have made in one year the same amount that Odell's made, which is, I mean, it doesn't make sense, but, I mean, the CBA's changed. Kirk Cousins put everything in motion when he signed a three-year, $84 million fully guaranteed contract, right? He's set the market there. Todd Gurley's reset the running back market now, extending for four years, 60. I mean, uh, other things like Carson Wentz is going to open the season on the 53-man active roster, which is huge for Eagles fans. Uh, They only got crazy better. Uh, I'm curious to see, like, well, Jake predicted the Browns are still going to be uh, 32nd in the league. I think they're going to be a little bit better than that, but you never know. I mean, they're potentially going after Des Bryant now. So uh, anybody, I'm open it up to anybody. Anybody wants to go after something, I'll make comments after. Yeah, I'm going to just first disagree with Jake and the Browns being uh, last in the league this year. I mean, I, I'm super excited about their receiving core. Um, you got you – got, uh, Josh Gordon, you got uh, Jarvis Landry. I think those guys are dynamic. I, I think Baker Mayfield's going to add that confidence to that offense. He's at the quarterback position, um, and, and their defense has gotten better through the draft last couple of years. So it should be exciting to see. I think they're going to be they're going to be better than last. Um, just hope that they're not ahead of my Giants uh, as uh, Dave predicted. So um, I, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, that they locked up uh, Saquon for for four years, and uh, I think it's a great deal. Um, Kind of surprised that uh, the Steelers weren't able to offer something to Le'Veon Bell there to, to get hit, to get him locked up. It looks like he's going to be on the move next year. So they got one last year. Pittsburgh better hope that they do something this year because I, I think if he's gone, that, that that offense is not as dynamic and, and they may struggle after that. Um, yeah, no, it, it's exciting with training camp starting uh, and, all, and all these these rookie signing contracts, and uh, we're that much closer to fantasy season. So it, sh- it should be exciting uh, to start to the NFL year. Jake is not going to touch all this. I'll throw Jake right under the, the, the bus in terms of just some topics. Des Bryant to the Browns. What kind of effect would that have on the Browns? Does that put them out of the basement in your mind if they do get them? And I want to get your reaction, okay, with my opinion about how the Browns are going to finish ahead of the Giants. Just a job at Coach Primo. Um, for Des Bryant going to the Browns, uh, me, myself, I'm not a huge fan of Des Bryant. I do think that it's going to do something in terms of bringing a skill set again to the Browns. I think 100% they might have the three best, the, the best receiving core in the NFL at that point. Um, my big issue with the Browns, I'm not confident with the Baker Mayfield at all, in my opinion, as well as uh, Tyrod Taylor either. I was a fan of him when he was young. Um, I mean, he was able to lead the Bills to the playoffs and so on and so forth, but I just don't see him being a quarterback that gets done um, week in and week out. Uh, so that's my big issue with the Browns, but uh, I don't think that um, the Browns are going to do better than the Giants. I really think that uh, Eli Manning especially is someone who doesn't get the credit he deserves. Uh, Thank you. I don't think he is quite the player that the media makes him out to be. I mean, you have to remember he is a two-time, I believe, Super Bowl champion. Uh, So that has to count for something. So uh, my big thing with, uh, sorry, touching back again on Des Bryant, though, my big thing with him is I don't think he's a receiver that you're going to get everything he has every game. Um, I also think that 
the Cowboys did a great job at targeting Des Bryant early. Like you want, look at stats for Des Bryant. He got targeted early because uh, he's a receiver in my mind that if you don't get him the ball in the start of the game, he's not there for you in the second and third quarter. So uh, I really don't think the Browns are good enough or skilled enough to, to be able to pick on receivers like that. So that's my big issue with uh, Des Bryant going to the Browns. So you're saying he's like Greg. Exactly like Greg. <laughs> a lot of jobs for George Greg. Oh, oh my, poor guy. We've been trying to get him on. Oh, yeah, was, We've been trying okay. to get like Greg on the four. podcast, and he keeps on bailing us. So until he comes on, he's going to get a lot of heat. Yeah, yeah I'm going to give give him heat. you got to get your ass here, Greg. There you go. That was a little swear from, from yours truly. But i got to say, just to kind of go with your topic, Jamie, Des Bryant to the Browns I think would do good for the Browns, especially in terms of ticket sales, yeah. <laughs> something that they desperately need. <laughs> if you look at the business side of things, but, you know, I don't think that's the answer for the Browns, for real, but beating the Giants this year, I like throwing jabs at Primo. It'll be tight. You got to think Odell Beckham. I'm a huge Beckham fan, you know, and the, the number that he wears. I love that, those digits on his back to his attitude. Uh, but you know what? I The Browns are making steps. You got to get face realization. The Browns are making steps. And as you said, if Le'Veon Bell, I'm a big, I'm a Steeler guy, and I've been watching my Steelers have success for the last decade plus. I've seen him multiple Super Bowls. Big Ben go there. He's getting older. I'm actually the one who said Antonio Brown was overrated in his first year. Jesus, am I ever dumb for saying that? Uh, the guy is on the cover of Madden. I've never been chirped by someone. He's screwed now, though. He's on the cover. Oh, he's on the cover. That's right. The Madden curse. The Madden curse, you know, you see, you know, Brady wanted to break that Madden curse as he did in that commercial, and look what happened last year. You know, he didn't win that Super Bowl. So, you know, I'm excited for the season to come underway because there's a lot of different changes this year that we were able to witness, and uh, I'm also very excited to see a lot of the young talent like Fournette. How is he going to do his second year? I, was, I love Fournette. I said at the draft, I've uh, been a fan. I drafted him second. Was it first or second round? You traded for him. I traded for him at fans. That's right. I did trade for him. There, yeah. You got so lucky because you traded Dalvin Cook for Fournette straight up, and then he got hurt. So you looked like a genius coming out of that trade. Like, yeah. You, you've, been, you've been pumping that up for a year, and I've been letting you get away with it for the last couple of weeks. Not anymore. Well, I will say I did call. But did call. He was going to have a good year last year, and he did. I'm very excited to see what Fournette can do this year. I did finish second last year in the fantasy behind Dustin. Of course, lost. Choked in the playoffs, man. Choked in the semifinals. Sucks to suck. Sucks to suck, as I say. But getting to wrap up with that kind of point more in the pocket bonus coverage, I guess you could say. The NFL this year, the big thing news for me is with Bell and the Steelers. I honestly am a firm believer if you can't lock up the guy, I am a firm believer trading him. But I know that's in the NFL it's different than it is in baseball and hockey. Okay, so the Steelers have to do it this year. They have to win it this year. Uh, they have Ben. Hopefully he can stay healthy all year. And hopefully that offense can come back and provide a championship uh, in Steel Town one more time because if Bell does leave, that offense crumbles a lot. And it will be a different, definitely difference on that team. And I, I'm, I'm going to see right now and say it right now that with Wentz coming back with the Eagles – He's not. He's playing over Foles. Oh, yeah. I'm going. To, that is easy. I don't see anyone else. I don't see Foles playing over him, Jamie. I really don't. So uh, pretty. This story. A lot of storylines this year in the NFL. A lot of different storylines. And the one that I want to get on this table quickly is the anthems. I'm bringing it up, Preems. I know we discussed that. Maybe we wouldn't. Okay, we got a little bit more time, and we're going to discuss a couple more things. What is going to come out of this? The Jets and, and Giants owners came out and said they support their players. If they kneel, they kneel. To be honest, I would too. I would support it. I don't care if you're the president. I'm sorry. I don't care if you're the, if you're the prime minister, Judo. I don't really care what, you, what your rules are. Arrest me. I'm paying these players. They're my employees. If I'm the owner, sorry. I'm treating them like they're a product. But if you're an owner, they, they are a piece of my team that I own. They're going to follow my rules, not the president's rules. No offense. So I, w- I fully support what the Jets and Giants are saying. You want, us, you want to kneel, that is your choice. I stand during the anthem. I get pumped. I played hockey, I get pumped. And maybe moving is inappropriate. There's, people are really looking into this too far, but I think Trump should keep his mind out of it and keep his words out of it. But you know he won't. So I want to get your reaction around the table with Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, I'm on board. I think the owners that are supporting their players are doing the right thing, man. The players, they're the talent. They're, they're what brings in the money. They're, they're the product. That's what everyone comes to watch is the players. So you got to support these guys. If they want to peacefully protest and take a knee, I think you got to support them. Um, 
I think if if as an owner, if if you're not supporting them, you're not going to have motivated uh, no motivated players, motivated employees, basically, right? Um, and so I, I'm on board with what the the New York teams are doing. Uh, I just I just read recently that the, the NFL and the NFLPA they're going to be having a meeting over this topic in the next little bit. Trump, there's bigger things to worry about, yeah. not the NFL. I, I think I think stop using this as as a political tool, the NFL, um, and, and worry about other things. And uh, I mean, the, it's peaceful. It's peaceful pro, uh, protests, and uh, for good reason. Um, so I mean, I, I hope that most teams support their players. I know Jerry Jones is saying the rule is on my team. You stand, and that's fine. In the end of the day, we, we, we talked about this before. The, the owner signs the checks. If my employer told me I had to, I'd probably I'd probably disagree, and I'd just do it anyway. Like the players are probably going to do. You may have some um, uh, players fight back against it and still kneel, and, and who knows what will happen with that if they're going to be fined or what 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 it will be. But uh, I mean, it, I mean, it's a it's a worthy uh, topic that they're they're taking a knee for and taking a stand for. So, in the end, I agree with the, the teams that are supporting their players. And in the end, I think that's what all the owners should do. But I know that's all the mode to that. We'll see what comes of it after these meetings in the next couple of weeks. And, uh, I mean, there'll be, I'm sure there'll be a lot of media coverage to start the season, as there always is on this topic, just because it's a hot-button topic. So, I mean, interesting to see. But, I, I mean, I, I hope that Paul just stay out of it and just, just let the player, if they want a PC process, let them do it and, uh, and just move on and play football. Jake, do you have anything to touch on with the kneeling? Before I go over to Jamie, because I know Jamie has a lot of words uh, flowing through his mind right now. I've kind of stole some mic time from him. Um, for me, I completely agree with both you guys. Uh, I think that Trump is exactly using it as a political tool, and I think that the players, they're gonna, they're, they are the people who bring in the revenue. Without them playing... Uh, there is no NFL at this point, right? So I completely agree that it is a it's a good protest. I don't think they're harming anyone. I understand uh, a lot of people might disagree with it, but uh, I do agree with uh, letting the players uh, speak their mind and uh, protest the way they want to. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anybody at this table is going to really disagree with that. Nobody's going to have a hot take on that issue, but... Uh, uh, so I'm just going to agree with you guys. I don't really have much else to add there, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you go off to you. If you got something. You well, I mean, I'll throw my t- two cents in on the NFL topics that we brought up yeah. before. Seeing as I brought up the topics and never got to talk yeah. about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I my mean, uh, you brought up Carson and Nick Foles. I mean, I've talked about it before. I think Nick Foles is in Philadelphia because it's the perfect fit for him. He's like people were all mad, like, well, he can go get so much more money now that he won a Super Bowl, right? He's not interested in that at that point. He was not coming back unless it was a good fit. He loves Doug Peterson. He want, He's part of that system. He, they told him, you're the backup here, but we need, like, and he would turn out to be the best security blanket in the NFL, and uh, rightfully so, won him a Super Bowl. But um, Philly only got better. Um, back on, like, the holdout thing, uh, I, th- I think Chicago might be a little bit of a sleeper this year. Personally, I mean, that's a tough division. you got Minnesota and Green Bay and Detroit, but... Like, Roquan Smith, their first-round linebacker, is holding out. It really didn't hold. Like, Joey Bosa did it last year. They have the same agent. Really didn't hold Joey Bosa back from being defensive rookie of the year, right? Didn't make a difference for him. So, I, I think if Roquan could come out, and that offense, right? Matt Nagy coming over from Kansas City. He's got Tariq Cohen. They brought in Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel. They got weapons now. Mitch, Mitch Trubisky doesn't want to go by Mitchell anymore. He's said that in the press. He said, that's what my mom calls me. I want to be Mitch Trubisky now. But, uh... I don't pumping up the Bears here hard, and our Lions listeners aren't going to like that. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they're a sleeper. I think they can make the playoffs. I think they could potentially make some noise. That offense is good. Um, but bottom line, I mean, Philly, L.A., like those are teams to beat at this point. And then any team that has an elite quarterback, as long as they stay healthy, right? Green Bay always has a shot to win. The Pats will forever and always be there. You just can't knock them off the throne. But Bear lover here. Like what they did this year. Bear lover. I like that. You know what? Definitely the Lions listeners might not like that. But you know what? The Lions, I don't know if I have a good feeling for the Lions. I really don't know. I want to say I do. I believe in Stafford. But, ugh, I don't know. The Lions. i going to watch out. I don't know. I think the Bears might finish ahead of the Lions this year. I'm going to say that. But, fellas, any more topics or discussions with the NFL before we go on to our last topic on the roundtable? Nothing? Clear, okay. We're clear for takeoff on the next topic. The one that I'm that I'm going to just kind of jump in and kind of kind of maybe take from you a little bit, Primo, because kind of stealing topics here today because I'm in the mood to do that. 
loyal players in sport. Today, Dirk Nowitzki, well, he signed with the Dallas Mavericks, 21 years that he's going to be with the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, shattering Kobe's record. Well, not shattering, sorry, breaking. Not shattering, breaking. Uh, breaking. Yeah, a couple, <laughs> couple, uh, couple months, but you broke uh, Kobe's record with the Lakers. Uh, you got Zetterberg with the Red Wings for almost 15 years. You know, there's a lot of individuals that are loyal to their team that they play with. And if you think about it, look at Eisman with the Red Wings. Gordie Howe with the Red Wings, absolutely. And, you know, there, there's a lot of times that we think of sport players nowadays move on to other teams more than what they did previously. But how important is it for somebody's legacy to stay with one team for your entirety of your career? That's what I want to bring up to the table and anything around that topic. Preems, I'm going to you first. I think uh, previous to, I mean, maybe 15 years ago, I think it was important. Uh, fan bases really like the guys that stuck around were loyal. I think more recently though you've seen that kind of go out the window with guys jumping around and moving teams and, and I don't think fans really care. Um, and now with, with fantasy being as big as it is people are uh, fans of players as much as they are as teams now. So they're, they're more a fan of like a LeBron or a Kobe or, or a Durant and, they, and they'll, they'll be a fan no matter what team they are. They're going to follow that play around and that's part of what you do to fantasy I think as now when we watch football on Sundays we're, we're cheering for the guys we have in our fantasy team as opposed to cheering for a team, also has still other team, but I don't think fans are as bothered by the guys that aren't loyal anymore. Um, it's going to be, I don't think you're going to see as many players stick with the team. You're not going to see the Dirk DeWitz, you're not going to see the, the Kobe Bryant's anymore. I think it's, it's different. Um, I mean, in my point, I think loyalty is a, a big thing and, and you should be loyal, but on the flip side, it's a business, right? And you're, you're looking to make uh, the most amount of money for your family and and, uh, and make a career the best you know how. And, and if that means going somewhere else to make more money, how can we judge anyone? Yeah. So so it's really tough to say. And look, look at Durant or um, look at DeRozan. He was loyal to the Raptors, signed a contract there, then he gets shipped. And, and so um, now you can look at the organization and say, well, you weren't loyal to the player. So it's really tough because at any point a player can be traded and and so what's in it for, in it for them yeah Wayne, if, if Wayne if, like I said if Wayne gets you can trade it everyone can get traded yeah. so it has gone to the days you're going to see someone stick out with one team for their entire career there'll be the odd few and it, it'll be I mean the special Dirk Nowitzki like Steve Eisman I mean we remember those guys and and they were great leaders and they and they stuck around with the same team maybe took less money hometown discounts and we think of those guys in a pretty high regard, but I don't think that we think of LeBron James any less, maybe because he played on three different teams now. Um, two stops in Cleveland, Miami, now the Lakers. So I don't think we're going to think any less of him. Um, he, he's a champion. He's probably the greatest player to ever live, and I think that he's going to be remembered as that. We're not going to be like, oh, he wasn't loyal. You're crazy LeBron right now. Sean. Wow. Can I, I, that's recorded. Th- that's th- on radio. Can we, get, can we, can we edit that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never questioned his talent. I, I don't, I don't like him as much as I like Kobe's, but um, maybe it's maybe it's Kobe's loyalty. Maybe that's why I like Kobe. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think gone are the days where you see guys stick around, and I, I don't, I don't judge him for it. But uh, but it's it's a different world, I think, and uh, like all all sports have changed where guys just don't stick out with one team. So I, I don't, I'm not gonna hate on a guy, but uh, I, I do like the guys that stick around and loyal, and but. For the most part, I'm indifferent on it. Yeah, well, for me, um, I agree with Primo a lot where I think that uh, loyalty 20 years ago, 15 years ago, made a huge difference. I think nowadays it's a lot of people go where the money goes. They go where they feel like it is best suited for them, for their family, for every other variable in uh, the suit of the trade or the reason they sign. Uh, so for me, I don't find loyalty is as big of a deal to a player's legacy anymore as it used to be. Um, and that's my big take on it as well. Is it was 20 years ago, the game's different now, so I feel like you're going to see a lot for the next 15, 20 years, you won't see people staying with teams for longer than 10 years maybe, right? So that's my opinion. Yeah, even at that, I mean, like you, rare, you see guys finish their rookie contract and they're gone, right? Or they sign their, they'll finish their rookie deal, they'll sign a long term and be shipped out after two years, right? But uh, there is something to be said for the legacy thing, though. Like you think back on Kobe and even a couple guys, like Larry Fitzgerald came out about a couple weeks ago and said, "If I'm not playing in Arizona, I'm retired." Which is, I mean, and Arizona loves him, right? He's one of the best Cardinals, Cardinals of all time, if not the best Cardinal of all time. Um, you love that, like Jason Witten. He was a stud, but yeah, I mean, 
Larry's uh, Larry's Larry, but I mean, Jason Witten just retired from Dallas, right? He's going to go down. I mean, there's a long list of Dallas Cowboys that have played there the whole year, whole career. But I think football, like you think about it, I mean, baseball's got a lot of turnover. Like as soon as like hockey, you just think about the Gretzky trade, right? And that alone is just so landmark for any sport. Um, and then basketball is just out the window. Everybody goes everywhere after every year. Like it's we're chasing dream teams like crazy. So, uh, in my opinion, I mean, football is kind of the last one really where you see those legacy guys and even now like salary cap restrictions that's the big thing it just holds everybody back everybody wants more money um and you're always gonna have like an ego as an nfl player as any professional athlete uh the guys that don't are usually the guys that take that hometown discount and keep going or they're such a superstar that their team's gonna pay them you know fill fill around them with subpar talent or whatever else you can afford but I mean, uh, I'm, I, I love the legacy stuff. I like guys that stick it out. Um, or even guys that play a couple years somewhere, it's not a good fit, and then they land somewhere great, and they stick it out to the end of their career. I consider that almost the same. But Well, the big thing now, too, sports, it's, it's a young man's game. Every sport you look at, it's getting younger and younger. So these guys got to worry about the, the money that they're making, right, and that they can support themselves after sport. Can they do it? These guys all have their own brands now. They market their own apparel. They're, they're a business themselves, right, whereas before it wasn't like that. And they're, they're thinking long-term, and it's smart. And uh, they have to support themselves after their sport is over. I mean, you think that millions of dollars would be able to do that, but when you live the lifestyle some of these guys live, it doesn't. So, I mean, I mean, these guys are being smart. They know that their careers aren't lasting long. It's getting younger and younger. You look at the age of these guys that are superstars now in the NHL and the NBA. These guys are young. They don't, they don't, it doesn't take time to develop like it used to. And pretty soon you're, you're obsolete and you're out the window. So make your money while you can. So I get it. I mean... It's hard, it's hard to disagree with what they're doing. All I got to say is mad respect for loyalty. Absolutely. I can tell you right now, if I had a contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs when I was a rookie, I'd say that I'd try to stay there for the rest of my career. But I win a cup. I don't know. Went along with shouts in sports. But, fellas, we're running a little bit out of time. We like to go a little bit above time. But believe it or not, since we have the show every second Wednesday, we're actually in our time. So we're good. We're in the frame that we are allowed, which is nice, which is a first. Producer Ghost and Board Ops Scott Nason. Love it. But the sad thing is the listeners are going to have wait, have to wait for another Sports Center show. Not, not next Wednesday. It will be the following Wednesday. However, with your playoffs getting underway with Brantford, we're, 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 we're gonna be, you guys are preparing for a championship. We're also going to have a special update. Next week, if needed, we're going to have a little quick half hour with you, with you two even uh, through the phone or uh, here live at Sports Center if necessary to keep you up. So we'll add that additional show in as long as that works. Jamie, Matt, or even Jake, any final thoughts before we wrap up the show? Yeah, just a final reminder, right? Sabercat fans, come out. Our JV team is hosting uh, their first-round playoff matchup as well. They're playing Sarnia uh, at 4 p.m. and then we're in a doubleheader like we've been doing all year for our home games. Where the varsity team we play uh, Brantford at seven. Coach Prems, little final thoughts and a little shout out with the Sabercats. Yeah, I just want to same thing, James. I want to remind the fans come out and support uh, the local young talent. Some of these guys will be moving on to university. Um, we got a lot of great players. It's a high caliber football. Brantford's a good team. It's going to be a good game. Um, if you if you enjoy watching football, I really suggest coming out and watch. We're going to be under the lights at uh, Spear Heights, so it should be a great atmosphere. And uh, we can use all the support we get. Just looking forward to the to seeing everyone out there on Saturday. Yeah, and just like to thank Jake again for coming on, right? Uh, he's one of our leaders for Cats. Come see him play. Uh, appreciate it. Hopefully you had a good experience here. Pretty loose atmosphere. It's not not too stressful, but thanks for coming on, buddy. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time here. It was a good experience. Uh, like you said, very loose atmosphere, and uh, it was a good hour and a half to spend with you guys. Thank you. Definitely hopefully get you on with a championship trophy at the center here at Sports Center Bar and Grill. little goal here for Coach. You might have to go on site to Windsor to get that, make that happen. I'm going to have to talk to the budget and talk to Brad Cochimilio, too, about getting that in there. You know, yeah, but that would be awesome for sure. And wish the best of luck to you, Jake, in pursuing and obviously you two uh, pursuing in the playoffs. We'll have a special edition hopefully next week with some positive news for Sabercats. Football, future agenda for the game, sports show. Thursday, which is tomorrow, July 26th, we are at Silver Creek Golf Course. Myself and Brendan Brooks will be golfing nine holes at 4.30. 
My first time on the course this year. My God, the balls are going to be sailing to the other holes. I might hit a couple people. I apologize in advance. I got a long drive, but it's not even close to being accurate. And if you hear some swears, well, probably not appropriate to say, but if you hear some swears, that's definitely me not following the proper proper golf etiquette. But myself, Brennan Brooks, will be at Silver Creek following a show with myself, Brad, and Justin for our Thursday segment at Silver Creek Golf Course. Obviously, Brennan Brooks, Brooks will be one of the guests we're interviewing, and Colin Miller will be on by for the Game Sports Show as well tomorrow at Silver Creek. And then another show coming up this week, Sunday at Boston Pizza. It is our last show at Boston Pizza. The very last show at good old Boss Pizza till the doors are closed. And if, if that still has been officially known or announced in the public, I've been saying it for the last few weeks, so probably the worst kept secret in Sault Ste. Marie. Sunday at 5 p.m., the Game Sports Show will be there. <coughs> Excuse me. Before I play my men's league hardball game. So i got to make sure I might have to consume a little less beer products before we play. But, yeah, you know, hey. Reeves, we got to get you all we can spare before the season's done. But we'll be out. That'll be our last show at Sports Center this upcoming Sunday. Then, obviously, myself and Scott will be at the Wicked Sister on Monday. And we will update you on the future agendas uh, going forward as each show comes on. I want to thank the listeners for uh, for listening, of course. Our loyal listeners always listening. It's awesome. The amount of fans that we have and the amount of listeners that we have is it's awesome. We hope that the show will continue to grow and the show is pursuit of reaching its goals and helping the community and uh, the organization goals. And also want to thank our sponsors, Boston Pizza, Sports Center Bar and Grill, The Wicked Sister, Pingator Cleaners, North Shore Sports and Auto, The Salon, The Super Pro Shop, Northern Quitters in Need, Big Brother, Big Sister, KBX, Silver Creek Golf Course, Northern Signs, and obviously our new sponsor and big sponsor that has brought us into their family i like to say northern superior brewery you can purchase our t-shirts for 25 dollars 100 percent of proceeds going towards charity you can follow us on the game sports show.podbean.com and also uh, go to our website uh, www.thegamesportshow.com i want to say thanks to jamie as well thanks to jake and thanks to matt primo the coaches for coming out and thank you again to the listeners i'll get into the usual conclusion portion Keep your stick on the ice, swing your bat, catch your, catch your touchdowns, drain your threes, and shoot your shots. Booyah. <laughs>